Swelling carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere has been attributed to burning fossil fuels, particularly in vehicles. This has contributed immensely to the global climate crisis. In Kenya, the problem appears to be getting worse with the population growth and increasing number of vehicles on the roads. This graph shows the trend in vehicle registrations in Kenya over the last 10 years. The implication is a greater carbon burden on the planet. Simply, the more the vehicles, the more the carbon emission, and the worse the climate crisis. Andrew Omadi, the CEO of Kenya Renewable Energy Association, explains the implication of this on the climate. The earth stores a lot of let me call it compounds that contain carbon, which is in fossil fuels, which uh, that includes coal, petroleum, natural gas, and also in uh, vegetation. So forests are a big carbon sink. Trees are a major storage of carbon. So when we consume these at a rate that is faster than the earth can absorb, then it all accumulates in the atmosphere and the accumulation of primarily carbon dioxide. There are many other greenhouse gases, but primarily the major contributor is carbon dioxide. And this accumulation then means that it is blocking the heat that is being reflected out of the earth from escaping. And the impact of that is that, that global temperatures are rising. Carbon dioxide emitted from vehicles is not only a menace to the environment, but also to health. Daniel Omboi is a Matatu driver who knows all too well the effects of carbon emission. I this Ina kwa vect. Kifika jioni nyumbani, sana sana unakoa sana. Usipopata maziwa, ina kusumbua sana kukoa. Ni wengi wanakuwaka hiyo mwoshi ina wasumbua sana hata wanaenda usi. Unajua unapofanya kazi mahali kuna mazingara mzuri, pia kazi na itakuwa mzuri. Lakini ukifanya kama hakuna mazingara mzuri, tuseme kama hiyo mwoshi, watu wengi wanaumia. Globally, Vehicles are responsible for up to 40% of all carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. A typical passenger vehicle emits about 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. This is the equivalent of the weight of over 1,800 bricks. In Kenya, the transportation sector accounts for over 37% of gross CO2 emissions as of 2016. This is an increase of 3.6% from 2015. Given the trend in new vehicle registrations, by 2030, vehicles in Nairobi alone will be emitting carbon dioxide equivalent to the weight of over 1 million African bush elephants per year. Jeet Bhattacharya, the CEO and co-founder of Basigo, a startup that supplies electric buses, reminisces a time when the emissions menace was briefly muted. In the early days of COVID, we had a really unique experience here in Nairobi. For a few days, traffic stopped in the city as the government came to grips with how we were going to handle the pandemic. And while that was an incredibly painful time for the city, we also had a glimpse of what could happen when we can begin to address the emissions from the transportation sector. We can clean up the air in the city. Many solutions have been fronted to mitigate the current global climate crisis. Doing away with fossil fuels and reverting to clean, renewable energy would be the planet's saving grace. Lakini kwa hiyo electric ni itaweza kuwa ni itakuwa mzuri juu hii ya ya moshi inatusumbua sana Electric vehicles otherwise known as EVs are gradually catching on and may well be the solution to the carbon dioxide problem in the transportation industry The greatest benefits of electric obviously it's clean There are no tailpipe emissions coming out of the back of that bus as it drives As EVs 
gain popularity world over, some startups have taken up the mantle to not only introduce them in Kenya, but also champion the cause of climate change in the process. Basigo is a Kenyan company that supplies electric buses and recently launched two electric buses in a pilot program in Nairobi. Basigo was conceived during the period after the onset of COVID-19 when there was reduced traffic in the city. Jeet, the co-founder of Basigo and a climate activist, imagined a cleaner environment with no CO2 emissions, hence the electric buses project. I mean, every single electric bus that we put on the road in place of a diesel bus can mitigate over 50 tons of CO2 every single year. Just like Daniel, Simon Mathenge was a PSV driver for over 22 years. Now, he is a test driver for the electric buses at Basigo. Well, the difference between the diesel and this one, this one is more comfortable. It is not noisy as that of the diesel oil and it is not smoking. So it'll not be stopped by the policeman that we are polluting the air. So this one is cleaner. There are times when uh, another vehicle passes, then uh, he pulls the engine brake. When he releases it, your vehicle is full of smoke. So you know what I'm saying? 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 With the challenges of fossil-powered vehicles clear, Andrew Omadi has said that it's about time there was a fuel switch. So moving from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. And electric vehicles have now matured. The technology is now proven. The application has been able to scale up. And that presents for Kenya a bigger and better opportunity. Just like Basigo, Opibus is an e-mobility solutions company championing mitigation of CO2 emissions. Opibus already has plans to assemble and supply electric buses in the future, but currently converts diesel engine vehicles to electric vehicles besides producing electric motorbikes. Albin Wilson, the company's marketing and strategy manager, elaborates the company's responsibility towards easing carbon emissions. So we've um, converted uh, 4x4 vehicles previously and now we're moving into heavy vehicles, right, public transport system. Because this, obviously this technology can increase the impact we have on the carbon reduction globally as well as the carbon reduction uh, locally. I think we as a company have a very big responsibility to lower emissions globally because we know the facts on the table and we know that the best solution right now is to electrify a transport system, right? So we're really happy that you know that we're seeing other players move into the market. It means that our thesis of the potential is correct and it's really exciting to see that it's a viable technology. Um, it's cheaper it's more sustainable and easier to use and a more pleasant uh, ride for the passengers as well as the environment around the vehicles. Besides private startups, the Kenyan government has also taken up the challenge in implementing climate action in the transportation sector by instituting a climate change unit. Moreover, the government has adopted a target to increase the share of EVs to 5% of all vehicle imports by 2025 and also halving the import duties of EVs. The upcoming bus rapid transit is also to be reserved for electric buses only, further boosting the e-mobility initiative. While there is excitement about EVs and the adoption as a strategy towards net zero carbon emissions, one glaring issue is the matter of cost. Wenye magari wangefurahia sana ikiwa bei yake itakuwa chini, wenye magari watachukua hizo magari sana. Juu sasa itakuwa imewapunguzia mafuta, itakuwa imewapunguzia service. While a, traditionally an electric bus would have a higher upfront cost, operating an electric bus here in uh, East Africa could be as much as 75% less expensive than a diesel bus simply because of the difference in cost for electricity versus diesel. Diesel is expensive. According to Amadi, for the EVs to be widely accepted, three things must be fulfilled. One, it needs to be cheaper to the consumer. Two, 
it needs to generate more revenue for the government. And three, it needs to bring more returns for the investor. Now, from where we sit, those three factors can be met by electric vehicles. Samuel Mwangi, the business development lead at Basigo, has been involved in the Matatu sector for over 20 years as a driver, conductor and Matatu owner and is privy to the economic pain points of diesel engine vehicles. Every month, 14th, 15th, our operators and investors and owners of the Matatus are apprehensive of the change in the fuel prices. You do not know if they'll go up, they'll go down, and chances is that they'll always keep going up. So looking at that, you have an alternative source of fuel for your vehicle, electricity. The fight against climate change is not just the burden of government, civil societies and corporations. It is a problem that requires the input of every single person and should incorporate all possible mitigating options. The big area of opportunity is a fuel switch. And a fuel switch in this case is a switch from uh, fossil fuels to either uh, sustainable or renewable sources of fuel. So we have opportunities for biodiesel, which can be blended with a regular diesel, and we also have opportunities for bioethanol, which can be blended with ethanol. In the war or in the fight against climate change, we use all the weapons at the disposal. While electric vehicles are a significant step towards easing the carbon burden and consequently the climate crisis, it is important that the other measures also be considered. For instance, rather than driving a short distance to the mall, one can opt to walk. Also, opting for high capacity vehicles such as buses and trains will go a long way to ease the carbon burden. Every day, all we have to do is drive down the road to feel motivation that this is a change that needs to happen. This is a change that everybody wants to happen. It's just about people working to solve the problem. <laughs>